In this video, I'll be showing you how you can set the values along the x-axis of a graph that you wish to plot. This is the computer program that we looked at in the last video in this playlist. And if you look to the first two lines, you can see that we are importing appropriately PyPlot and NumPy. This line is creating an instance of the ND array, often referred to as the NumPy array. And if you look here, you can see that I've wrote down a Python list, which I'm passing as an argument to this method. So what this will do, it'll create create a numpy array x that contains 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. And on this line I'm creating another numpy array called y and this is the calculation that is broadcast across all of the values of x. So this will calculate 2x plus 1 for all of these numbers here for 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. And on this line we plot x and y where the x and the y are numpy arrays that I pass into this method. Then I show the graph that will result. Now I'm not going to show the graph here. Go back to the previous video if you want to see what graph you get. But you get a graph y equals 2x plus 1. Now I would like to look at this in some detail, so I'm going to move it to here and then I'm going to enlarge it to see what we're really concerned with in this video. And what you have got, you have got this line creating a numpy array, but it takes in here a Python list. But when the line has executed, we have a numpy array, we don't have a Python list. That's the Python list that's passed in as an argument. Now this approach to producing numpy arrays works, and it was handy for the videos I've shown so far. But if I actually wanted not to have to do this to write all of these in, from 0 to 4. What if I wanted to go from 0 to 100, for example? Well, as a programmer, I don't want to be typing here 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 100 with commas in between, as you can see I've done here. There is a better way. And that's really what this video is about. Is there another way in which I can have a number of points for x, where x is going to end up being the x-axis? This is the numpy array x. It's an instance of the ND array, and I want to have it from 0 to 100, 0 to 1000, whatever I choose. But I'm now going to look at a computer program that will do exactly what this one does, i.e. it will generate from 0 to 4, but it will not do so with me having to pass in a Python list, as you can see here. So you can see I've moved the program to one side, and now going to bring another program into view, which you can see here and have a look at this line. It's mp.a range, and in brackets it's got 5. Now compare that to this. Well, they look different, that's obvious, but the thing is they do exactly the same thing. What you will get from this is a numpy array that goes from 0 to 4, in the same way as this gives us a numpy array from 0 to 4. But of course here I had to pass in a Python list, whereas here if you look what I passed in was 5. No Python list, just 5. Now what this will do, it'll produce a numpy array starting at 0 and going all the way up to 4. It doesn't include the 5. So this will create me a numpy array that contains 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. This then will be the calculation that works on that numpy array that has 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 stored within it. And what I've done here, I'm printing x and y so we can have a look at what values they are so we can convince ourselves that the x and the y are what we expect and here I'm plotting x and y in the same way as I did in this program and I'm passing in x and y I'm passing in two numpy arrays and then of course I'm showing the the figure so let's have a look at this when it executes so I'll move this to one side and now I'll show the graph and look here and you can see I've got 0 1 2 3 and 4 now that's that print x proving to us that what this has done has created a numpy array that has this 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And of course, if we look what we've done here, we're printing Y, and there you can see it's printed Y, 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. And of course, this calculation has been broadcast across all of X. So I'll just choose one value so we can remind ourselves what in fact happens here. I'm going to choose when x has this value of 4. So when you come here, it's 2 times x, which is 2 times 4, which is 8. And then we add 1 to it to get 9. And 9 is then given to y. And you can see it's here. 
9. Let's come to this line and what this will do, it'll plot x and y, where x and y are the numpy arrays that have been passed in, and have a look at the graph, and you can see it's the straight line graph, which we should expect, because that's what we saw in the previous video when we passed in these values as the numpy arrays. Look at the x-axis, you can see it goes from 0 to 4, which picks up these here, see you? 0 to 4, and have a look at the y, it goes from 0 to 8, and of course here it's not marked off the 9, but the 9 is in that position, and of course it's gone from 0 up to this position, because this is from 1 to 9 here, so this method is quite powerful isn't it you just give it x and y and it'll draw the graph it'll work out what the x needs to be it and work out what the y needs to be so it can plot it but of course i now can choose my x-axis to be any range of values by using this a range method here and on this case i've passed in five now let's consider this 5 and let's change it. So I'm going to take the program and I'm going to change that 5 on the next slide. So let's move on to the next slide. Here's the next slide and if you have a look what I've done here, I've put in 11. Now this tells me I'm going to have an array from 0 through to 10. It doesn't include the 11. And this line will broadcast this calculation across this bigger numpy array. And here, for completeness, I'm showing what I expect x and y to be. And then I'm going to be plotting x and y. So when this program executes, this is the thing you're going to see. Now here, that's printx. Let's have a look at it. It's this. And you can see it goes from 0 to 10, which you should expect because that's what this A range has done. It says, give me numbers from 0 to 10 and of course when I print Y I get this and look there are many more numbers there should be because there's many more numbers in the X numpy array let's just take the case when X is 10 come to here it's 2 times 10 because X is 10 remember so that's 20 plus 1 is 21 and you can see there's 21 here now of course if I look at the X values from 0 to 10 come down to the X axis you can see 0 to 10 have a look at the Y axis and that's a range big enough to accommodate these numbers here let's now go on to the next slide now I've got rid of the print X and print Y because we should know what in fact is going to go into those now. But have a look here now. Remember a moment ago it was 11. Now I've put 101 in. So I should now see that X goes from 0 to 100. Doesn't include the 101. And what this will do, it'll calculate all across those values from 0 to 100. And of course this will plot X or Y. So let's have a look at what we get and we get this graph here. Have a look at the x-axis from 0 to 100. So this is doing what I expected it to do. And have a look at y, and it goes from 0 to 200. Well, yeah, you should expect it to be a much bigger range, and I'll let you work out what it will be when you plug in the values to this calculation here. And just for completeness, what I'm now going to do is to alter this 101 to 1001. So I'll show that on the next slide. Here's 1001. And so now I'm expecting the x-axis to go from 0 to 1000. And of course, this will calculate all of the values for x being 0 to 1000. And this will plot the graph. And hopefully you should, in your mind's eye now, be expecting to see what the graph's going to look like. So let's run the program and see what we get, and we get this. Have a look at the x-axis from 0 to 1,000, and have a look at the y-axis, bigger numbers, going up to 2,000 here, which they will be, because, of course, you've got a bigger range of x, so you're going to get a bigger range of y. So this method here is very handy. You don't have to break into Python list. You can use this A range method, which belongs to instances of the ND array class. Now, there is a lot more to say about the A range method, and I'll be looking at that in its own right later in the playlist. But what I've introduced you to now is sufficient information so we can now have a look at how we can alter the style of the graphs that are being produced. So, for the videos that are coming up in the playlist, I'll be using this y equals 2x plus 1 as the basis of all of the videos that will be showing how I can draw a graph that's got a different colour here and so on. And also, while I'm talking about this A range, it's okay to give X values as described here, you know, when you want them to go from naught to a thousand. Um, but sometimes you want a more detailed X axis which maybe doesn't go up in what are effectively integers here, goes up in numbers that are fractions. So A range in those circumstances is not the best choice, but I'll be coming back to discuss that uh, 
later. But for as I say, for the programs that are coming up, I'll be using the program you can see in front of you here, um, and I'll be using that to show you how you label the x-axis and the y-axis, how you can add a heading to it, how you can change the colour of the graph, how you can have a dotted line graph. There's lots of things we can do with this computer program here to introduce you to a lot of the features of uh, PyPlot as well as NumPy. Please consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell to ensure you get an update every time I upload a video. Maybe you would like to consider supporting the development of these free videos via Patreon. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter and also check out the supporting website.